guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question number of recent calls. Okay. So in this question, you have a recent counted class, which counts the number of recent requests within a certain time frame. Implement the recent counter class. So over here we have recent counter, which is going to initialize the counter with zero recent requests. Uh, in other words, it's just the, it's just going to be the constructor. And then over here, we're going to have a ping, which is going to be an integer T. And this value T uh, refers to a time. And over here, we're going to return the number of requests that has happened in the past 3000 milliseconds, including the new request. Specifically, return the number of requests that have happened in the inclusive range. So T minus 3000, all the way up to T. And both of these numbers are inclusive. So uh, we count the number T minus 3000 and the number T itself. And it is guaranteed that every call to ping uses a strictly larger value of T than the previous cell. All right, so the question itself might be a little bit confusing. So what I'm going to do is let's just go through this example step by step. And the solution to this itself is actually pretty simple. Okay, so over here, we're going to have our recent counter and we're going to call a ping. So over here, we call a ping at one millisecond. Then we call a second ping at 100 milliseconds and so on and so forth. And at each ping, we return the number of requests that have happened in that range. So let's just go to uh, the sketchbook over here and let's see how we can look at this. So uh, in the beginning, so we have a ping made at one millisecond, right? So at one millisecond, we have a ping. So now what's going to happen is what is going to be the range of this? So the range of this is going to be one minus 3000 milliseconds and it's going to go all the way up to the value one inclusive of it. So in other words, let's just simplify this. I'm just going to do it in place due to lack of space. So one minus 3000 is nothing else but doing negative 2999. So this is the range in which we can make a ping. So in this case, we have a value of one. And does one fall in this range? And the answer is yes, because remember that the values are inclusive. So currently we have the value one and um, the count uh, which we have, so let's just call this variable over here count, is going to have a value of one in the beginning since we were able to make one request. So now let's go on to our next time or ping. So over here, we make one at 100 milliseconds. So now let's calculate the range of this again. So the range for this is going to be 100 minus 3000. Okay, and I'll just write the value for this below it. So this is going to be 2,900, uh, negative 2,900, right? Uh, they're both the same. And it's going to go all the way up to the value 100. So this over here is our range. So from negative 2,900 all the way to 100. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look back over here, which we and we have the value of 1. And we're going to see, it does 1 fall in this range? And it does. 1 still falls in our range. So we're going to have that over here. And we're also going to make uh, have the number 100. So the 100 is also in this range. So over here, our count now becomes 2. So that's what we're going to return. We're going to return the number 2. So now let's go to 3001. I'm pretty sure you get it by now. So 3001 minus 3000 gives us a value of 1. And we're going to be going all the way up to 3001. Now over here, we have the number one. One is in this range, right? So we can count one. A hundred is also in the range and 3001 is also inside of this range. So uh, again, our count, we have three numbers whose requests were made. So our count becomes three. So over here, it changes up a bit. We have the number 3002. So now we're gonna do 3002 minus 3000, giving us a value of two. So we're going to start off our interval at the value 2, and we're going to go up to the number 3002. So over here, let's just go back to all of our numbers. So we have the number 1. Now, is 1 in the range of 2, 3002? No, 1 is not in our range. So we will not be able to make this request over here. Now let's go to the next number, which is 100. And 100 is in the range, so we, were, we will be able to make that request. Then we uh, have number 3001, so we can make that request as well. And 3002 is also inside of that range. So again, over here, we have three numbers, but we were not able to make a request for the number one. And so our count is still going to stay as number three. Okay, and one more thing, uh, which is really important, is that 
uh, like the question said, that the ping, the next ping is always greater than the previous ping. So that's pretty helpful for us. So once you understand the question, I think uh, solving it is actually not too hard. So all we're going to be doing is we're going to be implementing a queue in order to solve this question. And at the very ending of this, we're going to just return the length of our queue. In other words, over here, we had uh, three requests that were possible. So the length of our queue was three, and that's what we ended up outputting. So now let's just see how we can do that in Python real quick. All right, so we're going to be using, we could use a list in order to be our queue, but let's just use the queue from collections because that is a little bit faster. So import collections over here, and now we can initialize our queue. So let's just call this queue, and this is going to be collections.dq. All right, so now we go to our ping method, and over here we're going to be getting an integer value t, which represents the time. And all we're going to do over here is we're going to append this to our queue. So self.queue.append, and we're going to be appending the t value. So over here, we're going to go inside of a while loop. And in this while loop, what we're going to do is we're going to check if the zeroth element, so self.queue, and we're going to go to the zeroth element. And the reason we're first going to check the zeroth element each time is because the zeroth element is going to have this least or the smallest value. And we're going to check if the zeroth element and now we're going to have a new range and we're going to check if it is in between of this new range. So if this element is less than our t minus 3000 value, so if it's less than that, then that means that it is not part of our range. And in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to remove that from our queue since it's not part of it anymore, or to be more precise, it's not part of our range. So self.queue.pop left, that's going to get rid of that item. And we're going to keep going inside of this while loop as uh, until we get rid of everything which is uh, less than this range over here or our lower bound range and we don't really need to worry about the upper bound okay so now that we have this at the very ending of this all we're going to do is we're just going to return the length of our queue so return length self of q and then uh, submit and as you can see, our submission was accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.